comic fam. I am absolutely in awe right now. Completely shocked about the comic books trending this week. Let's get into it. Another week, another list. We got an Overstreet Price Guide advisor. His name is Russ Bry. How are you feeling, brother? I'm fantastic. I'm sorry I missed the Anaheim Star Wars celebration, but guys, all of those books that have been off the radar now have leapt directly onto this list. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. You know we're giving away this Omni Man Invincible number one variant. You just got to comment on the video and let's start them off with some Star Wars spec that only the diehard fans anticipated. Number 10 on the list, Star Wars number 17. Now, this is from the Dark Horse 1998 run. We are seeing $75 average sales and $435 for a CGC 9.8 in June. Yes, this very week. A little bit of light spoiling here, guys, but for those of you that were watching the Obi-Wan series, we got to see the name Quinlan mentioned. And this book is the first appearance of Quinlan Voss. An increase of 633% this week. After episode three, I have to hear what the community thinks about this series in the comment section below. I'm loving it, but I'm seeing mixed reviews. I die digress because Quinlan Voss hasn't been seen or heard of since the Clone Wars fighting side by side with Obi-Wan, this selfless, legendary Jedi master. Did he survive Order 66? Well, after episode three, we know that to be true. Will we see more of him? Well, that's what the spec is pointing towards. This character has an amazing ability. He's basically the Chew of the Star Wars mythos. Now, that's a really great comparison, Tom. I like Chu because he was able to eat the dead body and figure out who the murderer was. Now, while it's not so gruesome, Quinlan is able to touch the possession of someone and find out more about them. It's a great power, and this has been one of the characters that a lot of people have been wondering about for years. He has been very low-key on people's radars, and the fact that we now have confirmation that he has survived, I'm very excited for the future. If you enjoy our videos, getting comic book in insight, information, spec information, and news, well, do yourself a solid and download the best comic app in existence. It's called Key Collector Comics. It's available for both Androids and iPhones. You can catalog your comics, get suggested pricing, get key books organized in categories so you can learn more about funny books and better yourself on the hunt. And if you use Kotom 101, you unlock a free two-week subscription of the app and you support our show. Next at the list at number nine, more Lucas Films Ruckus. What a great comic on the list. Number nine on the list, Willow, number one from 1988. $20 average sales, $400 for a CGC 9.8. This is an awesome book, and it's a movie adaptation of the first Willow movie. They got Warwick Davis reprising his role. Aaron Kelly, man, who portrayed Flag Smasher in Falcon and Winter Soldier. We have an increase of copies sold of 967% after the trailer for the new Disney Plus series dropped this week. I hope you had your key alerts on because that's how I was notified of this trailer. And then this book blew up. So all of this Lucas stuff back in the day, he had a crew of people he consistently worked with. Ron Howard was with him in American Graffiti. American Graffiti also had Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford was in Star Wars. Warwick Davis ended up playing Wicket the Ewok, which is why you had Ron Howard and George Lucas and uh, Wicket all in Willow together. This is a big thing, the fact that Warwick Davis is coming back. Ron Howard is going to be on part of the creative team. Lucasfilm still has a part. This is awesome. One really interesting parallel is that the three-issue miniseries is adapted from Marvel graphic novel number 36. This is a movie adaptation, a comic book adaptation of what the original movie was. Another one we've recently seen on this list is Dune, when we were talking about the Dune adaptation of another Marvel super special number 36. It's interesting how they're both issue number 36. But the movie adaptations of something like Dune, which is like a logical successor but not related, I think this has way more potential because there is the original team from Willow that worked on this new one. And I think this book has way more potential than that Dune one did. Yeah, the Dune comic was an adaptation of the first movie that was then redone and recently released. And although it was a hit, we did see Dune one spike, but seeing different characters in a different movie that's being tributed to in a comic book makes me more excited about this Willow spec than the former. Moving on to number eight. Eight on the list. Hit the like and subscribe button. That's why I got the comic sensei in the house. We have Batman 423, the Mega Con foil exclusive. We told you guys that we thought that this was a damn beautiful comic, and I think they listened. Oh my gosh. $250 average sales, but we saw a high sale of $700 for this Mega Con foil. Wow. I mean, 
I'm not shocked at this. You know their low print run. You know this is such an iconic cover that people love this McFarlane Batman cover. And when you talked about it at Megacon, I didn't expect it to take off like this. And it is just insane how much it went for. Todd McFarlane causing a stir with these foils week over week. Hit the like button at the list at number seven. We have Raiders of the Lost Ark issue number one. Debuting in 1981, this is the first appearance of Indiana Jones in a standard size comic book. An increase of copies sold to 400% this week, seeing $12 average sales and a 9.8 high sale set in May of 370 bones. Now, this book is an adaptation of Marvel Super Special number 18, which is a lot like the Willow adaptation and the Dune adaptation. And the really interesting thing is, if you remember a few months ago, a lot of the Lucasfilm people got gifted a record player. And the record player had these names on the side. And it's so great to see the names like Indiana Jones and Willow coming to fruition. That's right. People were speculating on so much stuff back then. A lot of members were actually speculating that Willow wasn't this Willow movie that had to do with something else completely. But we know now at the list at number six, Miles Morales, issue number 13, debuting in 2019. The first appearance, the birth of Billy Morales hitting $50 average sales. $177 for CGC 9.8 at the end of May. And the anticipation is finally over. We have been looking forward to Miles Morales number 38 for a very long time because we really wanted to see the first full aged up appearance of his sister, Billy Morales, also known as Spider Smasher. And this book, number 13 on the list, seeing a 300% increase in copies sold has been moving very very quickly because we want to know what's happening with his family. Miles Morales travels to a different earth because there's a chance his uncle may still be alive, but stranded in the Spidey verse. Well, what he finds is that this is a timeline where the clone that he fought, the evil clone survived their battle and that earth miles perished. And the ramifications of such has caused a dictatorship, the empire of the spider. At long last, we get to see Captain Billy Morales. We get to see General Genki and this ending. Oh my gosh, worth the price of admission alone. Billy Morales appears for the first time on the second printing cover. They took the inside panel and put it right on the front. We saw a 9.8 sale hit $188, which is pretty damn close to the cover A. And the second printing was likely ordered less at the time of distribution. It's rarer. That book should be selling for more. Two other great variants for this book. There is a Venom Island done by Eduardo Petrovich and an Iron Man 2020 done by Raza. Since Billy is not on the cover of either of these, they may be getting overlooked. If you enjoy what we do, hit the like and subscribe, but also hit the link in the description and join the June Mystery Mail Call. One per box, we're sending out a new Fantastic Four cover art done by Alex Malib. We got Kang the Conqueror going out in every single box. Give me an excuse to send you comics every single month. And at the list at number five, we're talking Derek Chu. Amazing Spider-Man number two, the one in 25 Derek Chu variant. Now we were seeing $25 average sales. And since this book came out last week, we've had some lucky people People finding it for as low as 15. That's right. I think this one kind of gassed up over the week as people were hit with this dynamic Green Goblin Spider-Man cover. Derek Chu hits it out of the park so often, and I think he's just an underrated artist. The fans know, and that's why I actually pulled some other variants and cover A's that are underappreciated that the comic fan may enjoy. If you're into convention variants, he has a great Red Sonja number 21 from 2018. It's a New York Comic Con convention variant. The Virgin version, there were only 250 made and that's going for $165 on average. There's also a trade dress of that art. With Red Sonja back into production, that one may be worth watching. We also have a punchline special. If that last book was too expensive, take a look at this glorious punchline cover. This variant is hitting $15 average sales. A great one that came out this week, Alien 12. He did the cover B and it's not typical for him. He does an incredible xenomorph and it's really dark and horrific, but it's worth grabbing again at cover price. This next one came out in May, Deathstroke Inc. issue number nine. And I think it's flown under the radar because it's selling for cover price. Next at the list, at number four, we're bringing you back to Star Wars lore. We have Star Wars High Republic Adventures annual number one. Now, Remind the community what the High Republic is. 
Now we know Star Wars takes place a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So what are they doing? They are introducing more characters even farther and even longer ago. Every time we do a High Republic or a High Republic Adventures, they're going back another 100 or 150 years and introducing new characters that are the building blocks of the universe we know now. So we have the first appearance of Porter Angle, a Jedi Master, someone who is... I'm getting some like Uncle Iroh vibes in this comic book <laughs> who makes a lot of food for the Jedi. He's got a huge beard. He seems like a really good hugger. I mean, he's like a nice dude. However, we know that he is a legendary master, and we saw an increase of 467% this week because the next era of the High Republic is going to focus on this character who appeared in this annual. We are seeing $25 average sales for cover A, and we are seeing a high sale of between $100 and $150 for a CGC 9.8. There are many listed for higher right now, and with 467% increase, it's all because we had news that the Blade of Bardata is going to be getting their own series. The writer, Charles Soule, has written so much Star Wars canon. The fact that he's saying this is one of the most epic things he has written to date has me hyped to read this. I'm definitely adding this to my poll list. We also know that this is a great fighter. He's funny, but he's also fun to watch. And he has scars on his face. He's missing an eye. And we're going to find out in these next issues that are going to be released, how he got those scars. So High Republic Adventures is kind of aimed towards kids and the annuals, they have lower print runs than the normal series. This is going to be a tough book in any grade, so I'm glad there are variants. There's the cover B, done by Jason Lowe, which should be selling for more money in my book because it's a cover B, and it was probably ordered less, and it shows Porter on the cover, and it's hitting $25 average sales. There's also a store exclusive that has Porter on the cover. Ben Havy did the cover art. There is a color and a black and white version. We know the print count for the color is 500. We can't find the print count for the black and white right now, but the color is going for $75 average sales. John Lamb did a variant, doesn't show Porter on the cover, and it had a $700 print count, and it's selling for less than cover B, hitting $60 average sales. But the online exclusive done by Derek Charm, where it doesn't show Porter on the cover, is seeing a $100 high average sales and climbing. Comic fam, we have finally come to the point in the list that you've been waiting for, a book that has nothing to do with Lucasfilm or Star Wars. Woo! Yep. Number three on the list, Horizon Zero Dawn, number one. That's right. Seeing $4 average sales and a 9.8 hitting $50. I mean, this right here is great spec because it's affordable, but it's also a classic PlayStation game that's getting a rendition hitting the screen, causing an uptick of copies sold of 1,260%. This was a four-issue miniseries that came out. There was a sequel that was another four-issue miniseries, and a lot of people were reading this book, but mostly the ones who were the video game fans. A ton of people were picking up the Peach Momoko variants because she did one, two, three, and four. There was even a multi-pack that was released with a special Peach cover. Comic Butch loves his variants and his PlayStation games. This one's headed to Netflix, and we have multiple variants to discuss. The Loish 1 in 10 variant is still affordable. Archer did the 1 in 25, the 1 in 50, and the 1 in 100. The first being a virgin in color, the second silver ink, and the third gold ink. And welcome back from our break. Star Wars number two from 1977. First full appearance of Obi-Wan Kenobi. First appearance of Han Solo. First appearance of Chewbacca. First appearance of a prototype, Jabba the Hutt. We have talked about this multiple times. $200 average sales. $6,100 for a CGC 9.8 last month in May. That's right. We were warning the community that this book was primed for speculating when it was hitting under 2k for a 9.8. Oh, how times have changed and an increase of 157% this week. It's got to be episode three. It's got to be Anakin going full Darth Vader fighting Obi-Wan for the first time since he lost his limbs. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. Comic fam, we finally made it all the way to number one. And this one is all CGC's fault. That's right. CGC, you spiked a comic book. But, you know, it's for good reason. We have Star Wars Obi-Wan issue number one. The book just came out, and it's selling for cover price, but we're seeing an increase of copies sold of a book that has been spiking week over week as we got closer to the Obi-Wan series, and then every episode that's dropped since... 500% hot damn. So we knew this Obi-Wan book was going to be popular, and we're exploring lore before Obi-Wan meets Luke 
on Tatooine. The cool thing about this is all of a sudden CGC announced that they have a Ewan McGregor signing, so we're seeing the photo variant moving as well. That 1 in 10 movie variant is indeed selling aggressively, just like the Dark Horse movie variant that also made the trending 20 on Key Collector. Make sure to check out the larger list where we source all these comic books from, which is likely a harder book to secure in high grade. Not the best paper, and also, it's much older. There's also a 1 in 25 Ario Anandito variant. And with Ewan McGregor doing an exclusive signing for CDC, this is probably not the last time we'll be talking about Obi-Wan on this list. We appreciate your time today. Come fan. As always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Join myself, Russ the Comic Sensei, every week on the best new app to buy and sell funny books. We're talking about what not available for both Androids and iPhones. Key books, exclusive drops, and convention coverage. I'm headed to Dallas, so you're going to definitely want to follow me. Hit the link in the description and take a look at these two other videos. We made them for you. 